Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, uh, today we're back to working on these spring hangers uh, that we had made some blanks for a while back uh, that needed to be forged. These are for a steam locomotive out of the Georgia Museum of Agriculture, our Vulcan Ironworks uh, 040 made back in 1917 and uh, we had one of the spring hangers break a couple of weeks ago we made a repair but trying to make some new ones here and get these on there to uh, make sure we don't have any more downtime on the locomotive coming up so uh, if you watched the previous episode we basically took some steel some uh, and band sawed out basically split a piece here cut and narrowed out the top up here and we did the prep work. I sent these over to our blacksmith at the museum, at the Georgia Museum of Agriculture, and he was able to kind of forge these the rest of the way. So he basically bent them, uh, got the forks in here, uh, got the hole punched and drifted through the bottom here. Uh, so we got plenty of material in there and he basically is now sending these back to me and, and we've got a little bit more machine work to do to them to get them finished up and kind of just uh, finish up a couple of things on them that is going to be easier for me to do in the shop here than it would be for him to try to do in the blacksmith shop. So let me kind of zoom you in here, show you what we got and show you what we got to do to finish these things up and we're going to go get this thing knocked out so that we can get these installed and put on the locomotive. Let's get at it. So here are the spring hangers uh, after they've been bent to shape. So again, we've got this, this is gonna go over a piece. There's a pin that goes through this one inch pin that uh, sits up underneath the frame of the locomotive. And then there's a slot that has to be milled in up here that a key goes into uh, that basically connects it to the spring. The spring is gonna, this piece here goes up through the spring and then there's a key that goes in the top and then the weight of everything kind of holds that key in place. Um, what we have left to do to this thing, uh, really just a couple of cosmetic things or anything else. First off, down here on the bottom, uh, I wanna just kinda, I'm gonna pace over to the belt sander and we're just gonna kinda round this off. He's kinda got that where it comes back out, but we wanna make a circle down here. Let me get a piece of chalk and kinda draw that on there. So basically we're just gonna kinda just kind of cut those little ears off down there. And I'm probably just gonna do that over on the belt sander. Kind of finish that out. And then there's also up here at the top of these, a slot that's in it. I don't know, I'll have to measure out exactly where it goes, but it's gonna basically kind of go in up here. And I will probably do that over on the milling machine, kind of the game plan there. That's pretty much what we got left to do to finish these up. So um, let's get at it. I think first thing I'm gonna do is just go to the belt sander and uh, spend a little bit of time cleaning these up. I may uh, sand on these tops up here where we got that rough bandsaw cut in there to smooth it up and um, kind of clean the tops of this up. Looks like you've hammered on that a little bit. This mushroomed a little bit on the top, no big deal. We'll just uh, clean that up to make sure that it fits up through the spring. Uh, this one doesn't look so bad. So anyway, let's uh, let's go get that knocked out. All right, we've got those rounded over now. Looks a little bit better. Also just wire wheeled everything, got them cleaned up, did a little polishing up here, just kind of cleaning up those rough bandsaw mark on the belt sander, beveled over the tops. Um, there was a little mushrooming up here on the top of one of these, so I cleaned that up a little bit. So just kind of overall went around these and cleaned them up, I dressed them up a little bit and uh, make them look a little bit more appealing to the eye. Next, uh, I think we need to get our slots cut up here for the key. Let me uh, figure out how we're gonna do that. We're gonna do it over on the milling machine, uh, but let me get my setup going and we'll get that knocked out. We've got this uh, hanger over here in the vise at the milling machine. I've got it supported on a couple of parallels up underneath the bottom that will allow me to 
drill through the center without getting into them. That's supporting it here. And I've also got a, a machinist jack just up underneath the here giving us some support so it's uh, not flopping around. What I need to do is I need to um, find the center of this and also need to measure off of the end and come down and drill a couple of holes through and then we'll mill a slot in there uh, for that key to go into. So I've got an edge finder over here in the mill and uh, we're gonna start finding some edges to figure out where we need to go. I'm gonna start by finding the center. I'm just gonna work off the vice jaws here. I'm gonna come over, find that edge. I'll zero my digital readout. Come find the other edge. And then I'll do the half function on that, which will put me in the center. So uh, do half, select, and uh, just dial in zero on the digital readout. Which is right here. Now I need to find the edge down here on this side. Again, I'll come in and I'll work off that end. That's my edge. I'm going to zero my digital readout on that one. I'm going to come in 250 thousandths to put it on the center of that edge finder because that edge finder is a half an inch around. Right there. So now I can uh, come over here and drill my two clear holes through there to uh, go ahead and start indexing this in. So let me go ahead and get this set up to drill some holes. All right, there's a sketch of what we got to do here. So this is my part. Uh, I got to put a square slot in here, inch and, inch and eighth from the top, inch and seven eighths long, five eighths inch wide. So I need to drill two holes, five eighths. So I've calculated where my two holes need to be. And measuring off the top, I need to dial in 1.4375, that'd be the center of one hole. And then 2.6875 will be the center of the bottom hole. And I've got a uh, center drill in here. Let's see, dial this in 1.4375. 375 right there. So that'll be my first hole. And I'm just spotting this with a uh, center drill, guys. And I get a lot of comments from folks. Oh, you don't need to use a center drill for that. You need to use a spotting drill for that. And you know, I, I understand what you're saying, and you're, you're right in some regards here, but I'm also right. You shouldn't use a center drill to spot a hole if you drill the whole center in it. Um, the center drill's got a little piece in the bottom, and then you come out to this angle that you put a center up on, and that is not a good way to start a hole for drilling. You want to just get a little spot in the bottom. but. The angle on the bottom of this center drill is the same as on the bottom of a spotting drill. And as long as I'm just putting a little dimple in there, using this center drill to put a little dimple in there, I'm doing the exact same thing that you do with a spotting drill. So I know everybody says, oh, you don't need to do that. You don't need to do that. It's fine as long as that's all I'm doing is just putting a little dimple in there. I'm just getting a place for that drill bit to start. So it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. All right, let's get a uh, drill in here. Drop my table down. I'm just going to start with a drill to kind of get the hole started.
try another drill bit here. Yeah. This metal appears to be hard. I had asked them at the blacksmith shop, and I know they did this, I asked them to normalize this metal to let it cool down slow to make sure it was in the soft state. This 4140 steel, though, can get kind of hard. I may have to heat this thing up and anneal it before I can um, do this. Uh, I kind of hate to do that, but that may be what we have to do. So, because that is not wanting to machine. I then tore up two drill bits there just that quick. So, yeah, let me, let me uh, do that. I guess what I'll do is I'm just going to heat this up with the torch and um, we'll let it cool down real slow. All right, we got a rosebud. I'm just going to heat this thing up. Process of annealing, uh, if you heat something up, you kind of do a red hot color and let it cool down real slow. It'll make the steel soft. If you quench it real fast, put it in water or oil or something like that, it'll make it real hard. So this uh, annealing process here, hopefully will soften the steel up, make it a little bit more machinable. Uh, I don't want it to be super hard in this application. Kind of got a polished surface part of that steel and I can see it's already turning to like a blue color. You can kind of estimate the hardness of the steel by watching those colors of the rainbow go through that polished steel. It's kind of turning more of a kind of a straw color now. So it's heating up. We're going to take it up to a cherry red and then let it cool down nice and slow. Starting to see a little color in it. Turning a dark red now. that is hot enough. I'm going to get this uh, out of the vise over here in, in that blanket. We're just going to set it in here. I'm going to cover it up and we'll just let it cool down. And I'm going to get that other one and do the same thing with it. Go ahead and get them both cooling down. Okay, we have let this thing anneal and back down. We're going to try this again. And that does appear to be drilling much, much better. Very good. I can tell it's still a little on the hard side, but it's drilling fine. I think it'll be fine. It's got one down. I'm going to go ahead and put a 5 8 inch drill in here. Put a little oil on it. Now let's get our second hole drilled on the bottom end. Put my um, center drill back in here. Go down to my next measurement, which is 2.6875. Six, one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, seven, five, right there. Give it a little 
dimple to start. And we'll drill this one out. Okay, now I need to mill out that area in between there. Let me get an end mill set up here and we'll get that done. All right, I got a five eighths inch end mill in here. And uh, let's see, we're just gonna get it down there close. another hundred thou down. I'm just gonna go back and forth until we get that milled out. Alright, I think we got it milled out there. So next thing I want to do is I want to run a drill bit down through both of these holes, make sure that they're in line with one another and they're one inch. These holes were just punched out, they were drifted, they were not drilled, and that was in order to keep as much metal in this when they, around the outside of this ring, when they were forging it, Rather than removing the metal, we want to displace the metal and keep that, that ring around it. But uh, I do want to make sure we have a good clean hole through there that uh, a pin will go through and will line up on the other side with. So we're just going to real quickly uh, get this lined up over here where it will go down through there. That looks good right there, I think. I'm going to lock my table down. And we're just gonna run a drill. And again, just make sure we have clearance all the way through it. So, barely got that one. My paper shank ran out here. What? All right. That should be lined up. I'm gonna have to get that drill out. It's not wanting to stay up in that taper good, but uh, that did drill all the way through and should be clean that hole up and make sure they're properly aligned. That's all I was after here. Uh, make sure a pin will go through it good. Now comes the real fun part. Uh, we're supposed to have square corners in this hole. So uh, I've got a square file and I'm just gonna file those uh, corners in there. Just don't really know a better way of doing it. Um, I'm not gonna bore y'all with watching this. It's gonna take a while. Need to make a pin to go into that, uh, to hold that up on the bottom. So I've got a piece of scrap stock here and I'm just gonna start by facing the bottom of this. It's gotta stick out about five inches. So I'm gonna come in with a uh, center drill. a center in this and this time we are going to use the center drill as a center drill and you can see you got a little straight section and then you got the area that the center falls in on so uh, we're going to go full depth on this actually put a center in it I'm not using it as a spotting drill here all right there we go I think 
that's about an inch and a half in diameter. And I need to take it down an inch and a quarter for the large diameter. So we'll just turn a hundred thou off of it. Get a diameter on this. We are at about an inch, 390 thousandths. Actually, about 387, 388. Put that in my digital readout. 1.388. We need to take that down to an inch and a quarter of 1.250. So, let's dial another 100. That got the uh, large end of the pin. Now we need to turn the one inch diameter shank that's gonna actually fit up in there. It needs to be four and seven eighths inches long. So I'm just gonna touch off on the end and zero out my digital readout. Move my carriers down 4.875. Right there. I'll make a mark. And we're gonna turn it to one inch diameter down to that point. Touch off. And uh, let her rip. Got 250,000 to take off, 100,000 on this pass. All right, take another 100. measurement here to see how much we need to take off and we're going to take it right down to one inch on the digital readout let her go all right we're going to go back to that shoulder make sure we got a nice square shoulder there A chance for a cutter in here. We're just going to break these edges. Barely break that one. This leading edge, I'm going to put a little bit heavier one on it so that it can kind of get started up in the hole there. And there we go. Let me double check my diameter here. We look good. I'm going to take this over to the bandsaw. We're just going to cut it off. I could part it off on the lathe, but I think I'll just cut it off with the bandsaw. We'll face the back side of it, and that pin should be ready to go. And I think the final little step here on this pin, we'll wrap up this whole project, is we need to drill a little hole in the end of it for a cotter pin. So um, I'm going to just get this over there. I got a little spot marked where it needs to be. And uh, I'm not going to worry about finding the perfect center of this. It's just a clearance hole for a, hole, a pin to go through. It's going to eyeball it, get it where it needs to be, which is about right there. Oops. We'll use our center drill as a spot and drill. It's okay. I, I promise it's okay. I know some of you guys are losing it right now. Every time I do it, I get all these comments about how I don't know what I'm doing. <sighs> all right, it's okay. Got a quarter inch drill bit in here. And we'll just drill that through. And I've got that one down. I got one more to do. I get that one done, and I think we're going to be done with this project. 
And here we go, guys. Our spring hangers, I think, are finished. I will note that I got the square corners filed into one of these. One of them I still have to do. I'm going to do that later on, but I need to get one of these on out to the museum so they can get it put on the locomotive. The other one we'll take care of sometime down the road when the train's in for doing some maintenance. We'll probably just go ahead and swap it out on the other side just um, as preventative maintenance because the other one hasn't broken yet, uh, but we'll probably go ahead and, and replace it since I got a spare one here made. Uh, pins are down here. Of course, we'll have to expand out those cotter pins once we get it in place on the locomotive, but these are ready to go, and I'm real happy with how they turned out. And just like that, this project is done. Spring hangers knocked out. I want to give a shout out and thank you to Greg Tucker, who's the blacksmith out at the Georgia Museum of Agriculture, who actually did the forging work on these. Unfortunately, we weren't able to get any of that on video. Uh, he was doing it while I was out of town. Uh, I actually was gone up to uh, visit my parents for Thanksgiving. Uh, it was after Thanksgiving. It was a Saturday after Thanksgiving. That's when we had our family get together, and that was when he did this work out at the museum, so I was not able to get out there and get any video of it, uh, but you can see the end results, and as always, Greg does a great job, and I appreciate his assistance uh, on this project. And uh, with that, guys, that is going to be a wrap. As always, thanks so much for watching. Please do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Those thumbs up and comments are always greatly appreciated. Hit that bell icon up there to get notifications when new videos are posted. And as always, a big huge thank you to the supporters of the site who support through uh, Patreon, PayPal, etc., as well as those who subscribe to the site. And uh, guys, we'll catch you on the next video again. Thanks for watching.